cars around the country. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were doing a big, we, that year we did a 50 state found tour because we realized that in the first found book, there were finds from every single state. Mm -hmm. So we thought, let's, let's take this on the road. So this guy, David Mickeljohn said, can I come along? He wanted to do a documentary about found essentially. Mm -hmm. And so he, he rode with us for you know, a couple of months in the van. And he realized when he got home and started looking at the footage, he was like, he's like the documentary that I'm making, he's like, what I ended up recording was found, but it was more about the ups and downs of your love life than, <laughs> than, than, than just the found stuff. Yeah. So he came on another tour the following year with us and, and sort of decided to even focus his efforts there. So it's a really personal movie. I mean, it's, I've just seen the finished version. It's just been submitted to Sundance. It's a, you know, it's always a, a long shot to get into a festival like that. But I think it's a great film, and I think it'll get into some good festivals and have and have, and have a good life. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's very personal. It's it's just um, the, I used to do a funny thing in high school and college. I, I had gotten a camcorder from somewhere, and I used to just film myself. It, it's like it was almost like a video journal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it was when I was feeling really down or things weren't going right in a relationship. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think it was almost like a friend that you could just tell anything to. So I would just set the camera up in my dorm room at East mm -hmm. Quad and talk to it, cry to it. Mm -hmm. So we found all this old footage, and, and David uh, found a way to incorporate a lot of that into the yeah. movie. But, but, um, and, and also along the way, um, I, I think, like, like these found notes, um, when, when I laugh at them, I'm laughing at myself mm -hmm. because... I've written the same pitiful love note a hundred times myself, you know, <laughs> right. and I can relate to them. So I think what's beautiful about My Heart is an Idiot is that it is so relatable. And, and mm -hmm. besides, I, I, I would ask for advice from people on the road about my own love life and, and to share their stories with me. Mm -hmm. So we talked to everyone from Ira Glass, my, my boss at This American Life, to mm -hmm. Newt Gingrich we ran into in D.C. And he actually gave me the sweetest, most insightful love advice you can imagine. Really? <laughs> Weirdly, the guy was like, I mean, oh, wow. really chill like that um <laughs> and uh and you know zoe de chanel the actress and just uh, just and plus just my friends and, and and family that are spread out across the country mm -hmm. and saw what you know what advice did they have for me so it, it's 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 an interesting story and um i don't know i'm excited for it to come out it sounds year. like a lot of fun yeah uh, i'm also interested in talking about another film called mm -hmm. easier with practice mm -hmm. this is an indie film that premiered in 2009 at the cine vegas film festival and was awarded the Grand Jury Prize. It took Best Feature at the Edinburgh Film Festival and finally was nominated for two Independent Spirit Awards. Tell us about your affiliation with that film. Um, so Easier With Practice is, 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 a, is, a, is a cool movie. Um, basically what happened, I wrote an article for GQ magazine about an experience I had on the road um, during one of the found tours. Mm -hmm. And basically <laughs> um, it involved me and my brother staying in some crappy motel outside of te uh, Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. The phone ringing in the middle of the night. My brother was gone off with some of his friends. And it was some girl, and she wanted to have phone sex. Mm -hmm. And I'd never done that before. I thought it was kind of weird or whatever, but I also thought it was kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. And so that happened. It turned into this re ongoing relationship only by mm -hmm. phone over the months that followed as we were driving around the country, and I was sleeping in the van at night. I've talked to the same girl, Nicole, you know, almost every night. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it almost began to have the qualities of an actual relationship, even though it was all over the phone. So eventually I did go to meet her. And, and the movie is just about this sort of odd relationship and, um, mm -hmm. and what, you know, what eventually ended up happening, you know, when we did meet. Um, Brian Garrity is, is um, in the movie. It, it was, it's a trip for me to see the movie because mm -hmm. the, the scenes are straight out of, you know, this young director, I'm getting ahead of myself, this young director, Kyle Alvarez, out in L.A., he had read that article, decided he wanted to turn it into a film. Mm -hmm. He wrote a great script, and, um, and he got the money, which is not easy to do these days, yeah. to make it. So it was filmed, shot a couple years ago. And um, these scenes straight out of my life are, like, on camera. And I went, I went to the shoot, and I was standing there behind all the cameras while they're, like, acting out scenes yeah. that really happened. And, and the guy that plays me in the movie is named Brian Garrity. Um, if, if, you've seen, if anyone's seen The Hurt Locker, they'll know him as, as the as one of the three main soldiers in, in that movie. Um, and, you know, after the success of The Hurt Locker and, you know, when it, the, it was, he was leaping around when they won the Oscar and everything, um, it's, it, I think it helped easier with practice, have a little bit more life. But, but yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it stormed all these film festivals and it, it played in some big cities around the country. And um, I think it's on Netflix Instant now, so a lot of my uh -huh. friends are catching it there. 
But um, yeah, easier with practice. It's, it's, it's still a trip for me to see it. But uh, you know, I, I guess <laughs> when you open up your life in, in some of these really personal ways, I don't know, it's like at first I'm squeamish about it, but then at some point I'm just like, well, that, there it that is. happened, <laughs> there it is. Well, you know, no one can really hurt, hurt, you know, hate, hate on you for it because at least, it, you're, at least you're just exposing yeah. yourself. And, and I think it's only fair too because by putting Found Magazine together over the years, I have shared everybody else's most personal secrets. Uh -huh. The found karma. notes get it's extremely, <laughs> yeah, they get extremely yeah. raw and intimate. Yeah, yeah. So it's only fair for, to let David Mickeljohn film me in my most mm -hmm. private moments, to let Kyle make a movie <laughs> easier with practice about uh -huh. something really insane that I went through. Yeah. So, um, so in addition to those, you're also a writer. You write mm -hmm. short stories and have published, if you want to hold up your book there, the um, <coughs> wonderful uh, collection, The Lone Surfer of Montana, Kansas. And uh, I, Arthur Miller has given you a beautiful endorsement that's on the cover there. And it says, Davy writes with his whole heart. These stories are crushing. But he's not your only fan, so I hear there's a possible movie version of this book that actor Steve Buscemi, who starred, and you may know him in a lot of feature films such as Pulp Fiction and Fargo and the hit series The Sopranos, and most recently in the HBO series Boardwalk Empire, that must have been pretty exciting that yeah. he loved this and yeah. wants to produce a film. Yeah, he's written, a, uh, um, he's written a script based on three of the stories in, in, the, in the Lone Surfer, uh -huh. um, including the title story and two others. And um, yeah, he's been recruiting actors, awesome actors and actresses, some of my favorites. And um, they've all signed on to do the movie. So yeah. I think the plan is to film it a year from now. And that'll be another really interesting thing to, to see these characters that I wrote. You know, some of these stories I wrote years ago and yeah. to see it brought to life. It's so it, exciting. I, I, yeah, it's super exciting. And, yeah. and he's a really great guy. He's super nice. In the, in the, he always plays these sort of weaselly <laughs> villains <laughs> yeah, and everything. He does, yeah. And so um, <laughs> <laughs> I think. But but he's just the he's just the nicest and really uh, deeply thoughtful yeah. kind of guys and kind of in a weird has like a very indie spirit DIY you know punk rock uh -huh. sense about things and and cool. and I really I really like him a lot yeah. So do you know yet who's been cast in the film? Um, are you allowed to say? I'm not allowed to say. Oh But man. yeah, but uh, okay. Yeah, Maybe I'm not even supposed time. to know. They my I have some. Uh, friends on the inside that give me the updates but, <laughs> but uh, yeah swear you to secrecy yeah so we'll just have to have you on when uh, yeah yeah it, when it'll, it's be, it, it'll be great yeah I mean I, I look forward to yeah sharing that movie when it comes out okay great and uh, there's another film that you shot in Ann Arbor mm -hmm. last year called Overhaul so um, what's that about real quick yeah um, Overhaul I, I worked for years all through high school and college at Bell's Pizza right here at State and Packard um, not far from where we are now um, I, I delivered pizzas, and uh, I still work there one night a year. Every New Year's Eve, it's their busiest night of the year. They always need extra help, mm -hmm. and for me, it's just a fun tradition. You know, um, I, I like, the, it's, it's interesting on New Year's Eve, you go to so many different houses, and sometimes there's these raging parties. Sometimes it's one old guy sitting alone watching the ball come down, and more than once, somebody has invited me and said, hey, you know, do you want to watch the ball come down and uh -huh. at midnight, you know, and gone in and just had this sort of quiet, shared moment with someone. I, I, I wrote a story um, about a guy who's a pizza driver for Bell's, mm -hmm. and he's having a really uh, tough night. He, he, he needs to make $3,000. He needs to somehow get together three grand in one night, New Year's Eve, mm -hmm. or he's going to lose his apartment. And, he, and in that case, he may lose custody of his, of his young daughter. And he's also trying to get back together with his ex-girlfriend. And so it's just one really intense night for the guy, and he's racing all over Ann, Ar it's Ann Arbor and Ipsy. But the movie is also kind of a, a, a love poem to Ann Arbor and Ipsy in a way because, you know, we show all these places. It was filmed at the places where my friends work, you know, Coach and Four Barber Shop on State Street, mm -hmm. Babs Bar on Ashley, you know. Yeah, that's and, fun. Yeah, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, I, I'm really happy with how it came out. I, you know, it, I'm learning, I'm really interested in filmmaking, so I felt like the way to learn how to do it is just by doing it. Uh -huh. um, so it's called Overhaul, and... Uh, and um, it was based, the, the title came from a song by a uh, Michigan songwriter named Seth Bernard. Oh, yeah. But yeah, yeah, who I'm a, Seth a big... Seth and May. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm a big uh -huh. fan of theirs. And, and I heard this song, Overhaul, and I just kind of imagined this, this rough and tumble guy, you know, listening to that song uh, as he's driving around delivering pizzas on New Year's. And 
that, that, was, the, that was the seed of, of, of the idea for the movie. Is there music in the film? Yeah, yeah. Seth Bernard has a lot of mu music in it, and he actually uh, acts in the movie as well. Really? Yeah, he has a, uh, a okay. great small part. And, um, and, uh, and then the main actor is named uh, D-Shot. He's a rapper from Arizona. Okay. And, um, and so he, he did an, um, I'd seen him perform, and I just thought he was such a great, strong performer. Mm -hmm. And I knew some about his personal life and things he'd been through. So I really worked with him to craft a character that's similar to him. It, not him exactly, but mm -hmm. similar to him. And, but, and he did a, a knockout job. He's really great. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I can't wait to share that movie uh, with the too. people of Ann Arbor yeah. and Ipsy because it's, it's mm -hmm. filmed here. It's about here, what it's like to be from here. And yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. So and now on to something completely different sure. to, to end with. Um, tell us about Washington to Washington. Sure, sure. Um, I lived in Washington, D.C. for a while uh, after college, and um, I got to be really close with a family that lived in kind of like inner city Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. a boy named Emmanuel Durant and, uh, and his, his mom, his siblings. And uh, I've been close with them. Even after I moved away, I, I stayed really close with, with his family. I would go mm -hmm. back and see him every year. Um, Emmanuel, tragically, um, he was killed last New Year's Eve mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a burglary. He was shot. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and went to D.C. and spent a couple weeks with his family and organizing the funeral with them. And, um, talking to his mom, we wanted to find a way to honor Emmanuel. And, and she remembered that me and Emmanuel had always talked about doing this hiking trip for all his f young friends in D.C., mm -hmm. um, taking them to Mount Washington in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. So we decided to get it together through the generosity of friends all around the country and, and around the world. People all chipped in. L.L. Bean um, gave us a bunch of camping out equipment. And uh, my friend Brandon Baugh, who li lives here in, in, in Ann Arbor and, and runs a group called Youth with a Purpose, mm -hmm. um, he teamed up with me. And we brought uh, seven kids from Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti to D.C. And then we joined up with 25 kids from D.C. Mm -hmm. And we three vans up to, up to New Hampshire, visited a farm, hung out with farm animals, went swimming, and then hiked to the top of Mount Washington. Really? These kids, seven all years kids? old. Yeah, all of them got oh. halfway up. Uh -huh. Some of them, and then a smaller group, Made, then they, some of them drove up to the top on the auto road. Uh, the other group hiked all the way to the top, including seven, wow. two seven-year-old kids. Uh, unbelievable. And, and, so they, cool. and it was a huge accomplishment for them. And they, uh -huh. um, it was just a really exciting trip. So we're going to do it every year, Washington to Washington. We're going to do a hiking trip with the same group of kids, and we're going to add more kids every year. And it, it's just a, a special group of kids who, who were just wowed by never having been in the woods before and s making s'mores with them and everything else. It, it was really one of the most important experiences of my life. That, it's a beautiful, beautiful project. You're yeah, yeah, on. yeah. There's a website, Washington to Washington dot org, mm -hmm. where there's a lot of pictures of, of the of the trip itself. So people and, who might want to get involved with that. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, there's there's uh, we just scratched the surface here, Davey. I want to thank you so much sure. for being on the show with Thanks me for tonight. Me. Yeah. I really enjoyed talking with you, and I can't wait to have you back. Of course. To keep us current with all of these things that are going on with you. Sounds great. And uh, congratulations and the best of everything. Thanks, Gina. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's really fun. It's been my pleasure. Thanks, Davey. Definitely.